Even before any ground invasion begins, hospitals inside Gaza are at breaking point. Medical supplies are running out. And Israel is refusing to allow humanitarian aid into the besieged city until all its hostages are released. As the war rages in Gaza, <laughs> this is where many of the wounded end up. A seemingly never-ending stream of parents, loved ones, desperate for help. But Gaza's biggest hospital itself is on life support. The siege has cut off medical supplies and the casualty numbers are in the thousands. Almost half the victims are children. The situation here is just a few days from breaking point. This British surgeon has rushed over from London. The ferocity and the number of these uh, uh, injuries has been shocking. The hospital is overrun with patients. Patients are treated on the floor because there are no available beds. And now, without power, the Red Cross says hospitals risk turning into morgues. We don't have the capacity to take the wounded that need to go to the operating rooms anymore. This man says an airstrike damaged 20 apartments with 250 people living in them. Women, children, the elderly. And it's about to get worse. As Israel readies its ground invasion, its top hospital is also preparing for war. We have a new emergency room, the biggest in the Middle East. From beds to trauma bays, every precaution is in place. But what sets this hospital apart is that the whole operation is being moved to safety underground. Underground, in a protected infrastructure with around 800 beds that are fully equipped to do what what is necessary? Since Saturday's terror attacks, the hospital has treated 150 victims, saving every life. The medical team says the wounds they've been seeing are inflicted by a different type of enemy. It's not looking for the soldier. They are looking for the young, for the children. It's the nature of a very cruel war. And these will be the war ambulances that will chopper in future victims. They're used to bringing in one or two patients at a time on this helipad. Now doctors here are preparing for large military aircraft to land here in Tel Aviv for the first time, carrying as many as 16 patients. If it's going to be mayhem, we're going to be much more efficient. It's like boom, boom, boom. 200 of the hospital's doctors and nurses have been called up to active war duty, but the team says it will cope. It looks like we're in for continuous war which may last for weeks months who knows and they are determined not to fail we are here we will do what it takes continue do the job we will win in tel aviv ashley Mullaney, seven news good morning it's october 13th 2023 and this is the day that international jihad has been called for and i have to ask the same question i asked three days ago when I brought you this story about Gaza's medical supplies being exhausted, according to the World Health Organization. If the Palestinian Authority is a legitimate government and is there to serve its people, the Palestinians, then how is it that funding for medical supplies, emergency supplies, emergency food, fuel and water have not been set in place as their neighbors, the Israelis, have done. It seems to me that some of that $50 billion that the Biden administration has diverted to Iran in various forms could have been siphoned off to build emergency shelters, emergency hospitals, supply them with appropriate equipment, and so on. You may wonder why I seem to be so critical or even harsh in my evaluation of the situation. Well, let's look at another recent crisis where governments all over the world had to prepare their population as best they could to cope with it. This was a golden opportunity for the Palestinian Authority to improve all emergency preparations for the Palestinian people. And later on today, I will show you what actually is underground in Gaza and what has been there for 40 years, unlike what is underground in Tel Aviv. Thank you so much for joining me. Pray for the peace of Israel, all Israeli citizens. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.